the recent years has been um, uh, years of tremendous growth for, for the market. For instance, in comparison to three years ago, uh, the market cap of all the listed companies on the Golden Stock Exchange has increased threefold. And now we're standing at around 20% of the GDP of the country. The challenge you're going to have is, you know, there's only so many companies in Mongolia and they can only so, only so many of them can list and there's only so much internal wealth. How are you going to attract external investment into your market? So if you compare uh, the market to a person, I would say that we're going through this adolescence period. Okay, so we have, to, we have taken our first steps and now we have entered the new phase. I would say there are two challenges. Uh, the one is lack of institutional investor base here in the country, i.e. long-term money. So that needs to be uh, introduced, uh, particularly a pension fund reform should be done in the country. Secondly, uh, back in the old days when Mongolia was top growing economy in 2011, uh, the uh, portion of investors on, on Mongolian stock exchange was more than 80%, but now it has gone down to less than 10%. So again, we need to reintroduce Mongolia. We need to reintroduce Mongolian capital markets to international investors, particularly to uh, uh, main financial centers in, in the world. Your stock exchange was just recently given frontier status by F uh, FTSE Russell. Yes. How do you prevent frontier status from being interpreted or behaviorally wild west? <laughs> Very good question. But again, obtaining, getting that classification for our market has been, um, let's say, we worked on that for a number of years. And eventually, uh, September last year, we managed to get that status. And there is certainly, it's a step which has been taken to attract international capital to the stock exchange, to the capital market of Mongolia. Because there are a number of funds, as we all know, which track frontier markets. So that was the attraction of international capital was the goal for us. China is obviously the key area. Most exports go to China. The single largest economic relationship that the country has is with China. Do you worry that eventually the Chinese will just buy your exchange? So I would say yes and no. Of course, we have to be practical. So uh, we all know that China is number two economy in the world. And also in terms of institutional investor base, they have grown significantly. They have very sophisticated uh, institutional investor base. So we need to attract them. Also, as you said, uh, given our geographical location, of course we do, we have to have some precautions in terms of attracting investors. But still, you know, it should be combined practicality with uh, reality. The exchange starts in 1991, is that correct? Yes, it is correct. So at that time, Mongolia was making this dual transition, both political and economic. So the economic transition went through the stock exchange. The stock exchange played a vital role in making transition of government-owned assets to the people. It's quite, in a funny sort of way, a little bit depressing when you see in a museum something that I remember using. The landline phone belonging to the first broker of 1991. Indeed. I mean, and, and all of this, this sort of... Uh, Things. Today you have a relationship with the London Stock Exchange, don't you? Yes. Which is quite a significant relationship. Oh, yes. So we've signed this um, Master Services Agreement and Strategic Partnership Agreement with London back in 2011. And uh, within the framework of this partnership, we have implemented, introduced this trading platform. Mm -hmm. So you just, uh, you just talked about those old items. So yeah, now it's all electronic. We have that potential to become the venue, for instance, for Central Asian countries, uh, if we manage well, particularly our, well, related taxation as well as uh, legal system. So let's say Central Asian countries, uh, Central Asian company, uh, Asian countries companies could come and list on the stock exchange potentially. I think I would say that that could be that could become real sometime soon. I hear what you say, and on this program in Astana, I heard exactly the same thing from the stock exchange in Kazakhstan. Will you beat them? Well, uh, we we do have um, we do have some examples of. Mongolian stock exchanges listed companies going and invest into Central Asian countries. 
So uh, looking from that perspective, I would say that we have the potential to attract more uh, capital, let's say, from Asia-Pacific region. This was a children's cinema, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, actually, yeah, it was. So up until 1991, it was children's cinema, and then it was converted into stock exchange. What role does this play in all of it? It now rather plays a symbolic role. So it used to be used every day so for opening trades. Right. Yeah, and then? And then now it's just used for um, IPO ceremonies. Yes. <laughs> it's sort of... What's the history of it? Is, is there, is well, there any... um, as far as I know, it was made in 1991. So it's been with the stock exchange ever since. So it's one of uh, historic relics. Oi, 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 oi. Enough of this historic relics nonsense. Yeah. I remember 1991. <laughs>